All right, so today I want to talk to you about the KUK230. So what I want to talk to you about, I want to give you a couple things that you should know whenever you buy this bike. I'm basing this video on the fact that you probably are new to motorcycles and not the case for everyone, but if you're new, there might be a couple things that you don't know about the bike or how to access and whatnot. So I want to show you how to do it so you can know how to maneuver and work on your bike and if you have any questions, please let them in the comments and hopefully I can just answer to you or I can do another video showing you how to do certain things. First thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that this bike has electric starter as well as kickstart. For you to activate the electric starter, you have to engage the clutch, which means you have to pull the clutch and then that's how we're going to be able to, you know, engage the electric starter. The bike has to be in neutral so you can engage and, and get your bike going. At the very least is the safest way to do it. And then in, in case you're wondering, this is your starter. This is what makes possible the fact that you can use this button and this is going to be rotating the motor and the flywheel and the clutch for you so you can get the bike started. Some people might get confused by the fact that if you engage or use the Kickstarter, you're going to be, you know, pulling the Kickstarter like so. Let's say that you ran out of battery or some of the electronics on the bike actually went out and you need to, you know, kind of run it um, mechanically and you're going to be like, okay, cool. So that's fine. Kickstarter, I know how that works. So I'm just going to be like, uh, and then you're going to realize, but hey, this pack is in the way. How am I just going to engage this? So in case you didn't know, unlike the peg on the left side on this side you know if you were to do this it always going to come back with a spring-loaded motion if you go on this side you can actually pull this up and it's going to stay like that so that you can make space for the quick the quick starter and actually the the kickstart and the kickstart is just going to go all the way down without interfering with the peg you can find this online, but did you know that this is an 8121 in the front? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. For the rear, you have a 110-90-18. This is the petcock. And if you don't have a lot of experience with bikes that are carbureted like this one, and in, by the way, if you don't know what a carburetor is, this right here, that means that you need a way for fuel to come down from the tank with gravity or by getting pulled from the you know suction forces of the carburetor so this pet cut actually closes the valve that allows for fuel to run from the tank through the pet cut to the car so that's pretty standard and that's you know pretty easy to understand but what is sometimes very hard to understand because there's not enough markings on the car or the pet cut pecker for this matter is the fact that what these positions mean like what what should i do so anyhow let me explain if you have this horizontally like i have it right now the petcock is not allowing fuel to go to the carburetor so when you're not using your bike this is the position you want when you're riding your bike you want to put it down so your tank completely full of gas and you're using the tank all the time let's say your bike start to sputter and sputters because it got to a point where wow you already almost run out of, out of fuel, so your bike is not getting the, the actual amount of fuel that it needs to run. So you're going to be moving to the reserve, and this is going to allow for the bottom of the fuel to be used by the, by the, by the bike by allowing to use like that very bottom of the fuel that's only allowed in your tank whenever you deplete or use the rest of the fuel. So this is the reserve so that means that whenever you have to change from this to this in order for your bike to run you you have probably less than a gallon so you better be getting some fuel otherwise you're going to be running out of fuel so again i'm not going to run it right now so i'm just going to turn it to off do you know that this is where the air filter lifts so how do you get to it easy just take a screwdriver you remove this Philip bolt and then you pull to the left and that's going to be revealing your air filter how do you remove your air filter so you can clean it easy you're going to remove this bolt and then you're going to kind of 
pull from the corners until you play and then you can pull it and this is how you can clean and re-oil your filter you're installing your filter back this is where the thing is going to go so you're going to have to get here and then ensure that this portion it's actually fitting inside of there so that whenever you put the bolt in it it's going to grab and it's going to keep the filter in place and then just simply put the bolt back now that it's secure let's put this back so i'm going to be starting here and ensuring that i'm also paying attention to where this lip is going to go and once i do that i kind of push it to this to the inside i present my bolt here And I'm simply going to tighten this bolt. And that's it. The battery leaves under this seat. So I'm gonna show you two things, how to remove the seat and how to reveal where the battery is. Remove the battery, you're going to use a number 10 millimeter and you're gonna be removing this bolt. Bolt remove, I'm going to be pulling back and I'm going to be revealing and removing the seat. In order for me to ensure that I'm not going to be losing my bolt, I always like to put it in here so it, so it stays together and I'm, then I just put it in here. This is going to be revealing where all of your electrical connections are going to end up in. So now you can see where the battery is. So if you need to remove the battery to do any work on your bike, you're going to be removing this fillip um, and then removing this belt so that, that the one that's holding down the, the battery in place and or you can simply just remove the negative on your on your battery so that you can work safely on your bike without you know causing any issues or electrical issues. In order to put back your seat, it's super easy. We're going to be removing the bolt and I'm going to ensure that this lip is actually going through here and then this wedge is going to be catching on this bolt. So this first, I push forward, kind of feel like how the, the, the seat, it's kind of sitting down and I'm going to now put the bolt back. I put pressure, start by hand. Are you wondering where your rectifier is? Right here on the frame, left side for this bike. Are you wondering where to fill your oil whenever you're doing an oil change? Right side of the bike. Wondering where's the carburetor adjustment just for idle as well as filling? It's right here. The top one is how you adjust your idle and the one in the bottom adjusts your mixture. So if you need to make some adjustment depending on how cold it is outside or how hot it is outside for your environmental conditions, um, I find it very easy to undo this bolt and undo this other bolt kind of holding you know, the, the carb on the engine side. And by doing that, it allows me to rotate a little bit the, the carburetor back. And by doing that, I can just play and kind of push this so that I can reveal that bottom at the very you know bottom of the carburetor that allows me to do that adjustment are you wondering where's your spark plugs so take a look it's on the right side of your bike did you know this is not a compression relief but a choke so whenever you're starting your bike if you need some extra fuel you're going to be pulling the clutch and at the same time you're going to start your bike and you're going to be pulling this so you can choke the bike and add some additional fuel needed for you know a little bit so that you can get the bike started, hit it, the piston, and start burning that fuel properly so that you can ride your bike. You know that you can get multiple functionalities from this key. So by just doing one time, you're actually enabling the electronics to start so that your bike can use your electronic starter um, on, on the first step. If you go to the second one, it's going to continue allowing for the electronic you know started to be used and other functions like functions in the bike and it's also going to keep your headlight on if you don't want your headlight on then you can just go back one step 
and now you have the electronics on, but the headlight is not going to be on. Don't forget to turn it off. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed this video. When I started working on motorcycles, I was not really that mechanically inclined. So there was a lot of things that I didn't know what to do, where to go, how to find them, how to remove plastics, especially if you're talking super sports bike. Geez, like sometimes there's so many bolts and sometimes there's so many things that have to come out before you can get to a tank and stuff like that. So hopefully this is helpful for you. And if there's something else you'd like to know about the engine, the tires, the wheels, how to do tire, tubes, whatever, just let me know. And hopefully I can put a video together in the future that can help you to, you know, do some proper maintenance, basic maintenance, and maybe a little bit more intermediate. Thank you so much for, for watching this video.